Okay, hi and welcome to the Domain Specific Languages of Mathematics course, week 6, chapter 6, and lecture 2. So we will continue here a little bit talking about the data type FUNEXP, which is mostly repetition, but trying to reconstruct it, looking at all of its methods or constructors, and then uh, provide the remaining derivative series instances that we didn't get to. We defi defined the ring instances in the previous lecture and now we'll continue to, to define the multiplicative group and the transcendental uh, instances. Okay, so I'm importing a number of different helper modules. I just remind you that in algebra I've got uh, the definition of all the numeric type classes of this book. I'm hiding most of the prelude by importing it qualified, and then I implement just a few things like the ek class, the odd class, and the show class, the types double rational, and a few very simple help functions. This is to keep track of uh, what I'm actually doing, using, so that it should be easy for people who are not extremely well into Haskell. Uh, I probably will use simplify a bit later. It is a function that takes fun, uh, fun exp expressions and does things like zero multiply s by x is zero and so on. And basically the live coding from last lecture is now in the PS DS uh, module. So PS for power series, DS for derivative series. And um, Let's now look at, I, I've commented out the import of FunXP here because that code is the one I'm now filling in below here. So this is basically the start of the module FunXP from DSL so Math. So first uh, we start out with FunXP being a rather boring data type. It can either be const real or x and then everything is commented out and then it derives these different instances. And I now will extend it step by step uh, also extending the eval function. Um, but already here, I wanted to start at a very simple case. I need the eval const. And if we check the types here, uh, the type of eval const, well, it's a ring. Uh, it, 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 it takes a real number, which is a double, and then it should produce a function of a to a for any ring a. Actually, any field a, sorry. So let's look at eval const. So this is a function that looks a bit strange. So it takes a real number. Remember that is actually double. So we approximate real numbers by doubles here. And um, so the real equal double. And then it should produce something for any field data type. And that's a bit of a strange conversion. So it, um, it's doing two things here. One is producing a constant function. That's the, what eval should do of FunExp. But the core of the transformation here is the real to field function. So it takes a double and returns a value. And I've written it here step by step. So first the real number, that's then the, the, of type double. And I should return a value of type A. So I get the value from the function from rational in the algebra module. So this needs a rational to start out with, but I have a real number, a double actually. But then there is the predefined function from the prelude, which will convert any, uh, well, actually most doubles to rational numbers. So we can try out these uh, separately. So I, if I do prelude dot to rational of say 3.5, I get seven halves. And even if I take something which you wouldn't think is a rational, like pi, the thing is that the representation in the computer has finite precision. And that approximation is then exactly this uh, rational. So this is not what pi is exactly, it's just what the double representation of pi is exactly. Oh, actually, I'm not sure if it's a double or it's, if it's a single precision. Let's let's try it again, saying explicitly want this to be a double. Yeah, so that's that's a double. I don't think I have 
upload in here, but if I explicitly ask for it. Ah, okay, then I haven't made the instances for transcendental and so on. Anyway, so this is a bit of a annoying conversion and I'm showing it here mainly because in the lab two, for those taking the course now, you need this conversion and it's not intended that you should sort of scratch your head for a long time. That's not where the lab difficulty should come. Okay, back to the top. So we had const and we had x and remember now the evaluator uh, which should always return a function from a to a. Uh, at this stage we could say find x uh, a to a for any for any field field a because so far we haven't used anything more than the field operations. And if it hadn't been for, for this const conversion, we wouldn't have needed field either yet either. But let's let's extend it when we need to. Okay, then we add constructors for addition. Well, if we add addition, then we also need to uh, provide a case for addition. And here I'm trying to use uh, plus, so the the operation of the type class, and that also means that it's useful to have an instance around because um, you might remember I had this deep copy function a few lectures back and I can now provide an instance for that. So what is this instance doing? Well, it tells you that if you want to fun exp out, then you can use the syntactic constructor for plus. I probably should split the screen here so I can show the type declaration at the same time as I see the instance declaration. So if we try it, then we could call eval on, well, x colon plus colon x. And then, well, at this stage, it doesn't know what I want to do with, and I want to apply this to one, then I get two, but if I apply it to say x, um, Okay, let's see what it's complained about. Ah, no add group for fun XPR. Yeah, yeah, so I I've, I have to provide several classes at once. So so let's do that. Um, let's let's wait with that slightly then until we have provided them. Anyway, I I can provide these syntax instances so I can get back the syntax. So the eval will actually then become a deep copy. So let's add in a little more. Now, if I go down here, then I've added in all the field uh, methods. So it's addition, it's subtraction, it's multiplication, and it's division. And then I also need to add these corresponding cases in the evaluator. I move down the comment to there. And then I can move down this as well. Let's hide this one and reload and evaluate. Oops, sorry, this was now Q. So notice if I evaluate this at one, then it knows one is a, it defaults a double. If I evaluate this at a type which has, well, at a sun fun x, for example, x, I will get this back. I can also use this for substitution if I write here const one, I will get const one plus const one. So whatever I write here will be spliced in in the two position because eval, I don't want to save here, um, eval in the x case just applies the identity to this function and then transports the rest down. Okay, uh, so what was not talked about earlier was the transcendental part and now I need to move back to the typing I had originally. And then these are the functions I've chosen to include. I say os and so on here because you could have, could also have, say, the arc, cosine, the arc, tangent, and so on. Lots of different functions. But let's keep it uh, nice and simple with the exponential sine and cosine. So then I need to also uncomment these. Um, it's worth noting here 
that I'm using uh, the fact that we've got function instances. I should have mentioned that before, but remember, uh, this always returns a function. So this eval, this part here, eval e1, is a function, and this plus here is acting on functions. So it's the left function plus the right function. Similarly here, negate takes a function, multiplication, receive, all of these operations are now acting on functions. And if we want to check that eval of the cosine of x at 1 is doing something, well, maybe we should take it to 0 because then we know it should be 1. And now we can form expressions like, um, actually, I this is when I should uh, include the instance declaration also for transcendental here. And then I could, for example, make this expression uh, put put is equal to sine times sine plus cosine times cosine. So what type does this have? Well, for any transcendental, it's a function from A to A. So it's, it's on the type class level. It doesn't quite know what it should be doing. But for example, if I apply this to one, well, or any double, 8.7, 98, and so on, it will be approximately one. But I can also apply it to something else. Like now when I go to syntax instance, I can apply it to X. And then I will get back the, the syntactic description, sine X squared plus cosine X squared, basically. And uh, that was a nice uh, motivating example of why it's useful to have the syntax in, syntactic instances in scope. Um, now what I will do after I've introduced this, it was actually, I will comment out all of these uh, fun exp definition, the whole fun exp definition. So basically down to here and from where it says start of GSS math code because I will instead just import it from the other library. Yeah, duplicate instance declaration. I, I should have commented out also the syntactic instances. So let's, um, let's move the end comment actually down here. So this comment was not accurately placed. Okay, and let's check that this still works. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, uh, I need to redefine because I reloaded. Uh, so this was sign. And now we can try to apply it to X, yes. So let's, let's put this one in here as a motivating example as well. Yeah, I have a collection of examples. So let's put it as the first example. This is transcendental A, A arrow A. Okay, so now as another example, motivating example, I will use um, uh, e to the power of minus x squared. And here is just uh, the first few terms of its Taylor series at zero or the Maclaurin series. Uh, so we can check if we actually get the reasonable results out. So um, I want to evaluate, uh, implement this one and I had error to do here because I didn't have the instances until now. So now I can put it back in and it says, evaluate the syntactic expression x negate x times x. And uh, as you can see down here, I should write this. I've made one example from, from instantiating this double, so applying test one to one, and one example where I apply it to a polynomial. So let's see what test one real is. Okay, well, I hope that e to the power of minus one is this value. Maybe I should say x minus one. Yeah, that seems to match. And then the other one, the power series. Well, if I want to test the power series, I can apply this test one to xp. So xp is uh, defined was defined in the previous lecture. Uh, but notice that this is a, a power series, which means an infinite list of coefficients. So I should really take just a finite prefix, say the first 10 elements. Okay, and now we can see if we compare up here, 
uh, let's let's copy this one. So it says one zero. Yeah, okay. Every second term is zero. One minus one. So that's one and minus one, and then it's half one sixth, and then one twenty fourth. Let's see if this seems to work. This is one half. This is minus one sixth. Yes, and then a zero, and then this is probably one twenty fourth. Okay, so it seems they they agree. So notice that this uh, I just send in XP here, here, and then the other implementations are from the instances for what sine, cos, and what well, what exponential function negate and multiplication should do. And I will not look at the power series instances right now because I would like to fill in the DS derivative series instances, which is slightly different, just for practice. Okay, we'll check this now with real, um, and it should also be. Um, possible to apply it to fun exp. So what happens if I do test one of x? Well, then I just get back to syntax tree. So notice that it evaluates it to a sort of polymorphic value, but if I apply that value to x, then I will get back the syntax tree that I had from the beginning. ds I can't test, so I if I want to apply test one to x ds, then it says xds is still to do to implement. So let's look for it. Oh, well, actually, I, I prepared it. I should say one more thing. Uh, notice here I'm calling eval of a syntax tree, but I made instances uh, so that I can actually, instead of involving the syntax tree explicitly, I can use the class methods. So test2 here uh, can also be used in the same way as before. I can apply it to xp, well, in which case I need to take a limited number of terms, uh, or I can apply it to just one to evaluate it. So here I don't involve the syntax tree at all, at least not visibly, but I can get the syntax tree back by applying it, but by if I provide the syntax tree in. So that's a nice one. But now for the instances for uh, the derivative series. So let's slide this off a little bit so I fit my long line. So here, as usual, I just give a name equal a name and then I define it separately. So recipe ds should implement uh, the reciprocal, so one over. So if we now first think about what is the derivative of f to the power of minus 1. Let's write it as the derivative of this. Well, we know from derivative of powers of uh, that we can uh, compute this to be minus 1 times f to the power of minus 2 times the derivative of f. So this is the inner derivative. So if f is a function and it's 1 over f, then I should also remember to multiply by the inner derivative. Okay, so uh, strengthened by this, let's start defining recipe. So remember, this is uh, in the context where we have a ds, um, and I can actually uh, get rid of this constructor first. So this can be defined in terms of a recipe L, which works on that list and has very much the same type. Just to match a little bit easier. So recip L, uh, first, uh, if we have the empty list, that represents zero. So then it's just an error again. Then it's uh, recip, so div, division, division by zero. Uh, but otherwise, uh, if it's not division by zero, then we have something which I will call here fs, and not. I will also match that as a pattern, saying that's f zero, so that you know the derivative series here starts with a zeroth derivative, which is not a derivative at all, but a function, and it's actually not a function, but its value at zero that we store, followed by fs prime, 
which is basically a representation of the derivative of fs. Okay, um, now we have to fill in some right hand side and I will give just the uh, a variable name first. So the reciprocal, let's call it the series here rs. So then we have to locally define what is rs. Well, rs in turn has an r0 followed by an rs prime, so the derivative. So r0. Well, remember now that we we are having this style that the first value should be the function value. So if this is f0, this should be the reciprocal of f0. So this is of type a, the underlying type of the coefficient or the derivatives in the series. So that one is simple. And then it's a question, what is rs prime? What is the tail? So I'll just first here write, okay, so this is the tail of our answer. And we know that this is actually the derivative uh, of, our, of our answer. And I can't have two equality signs, so let's just keep this one. And we said down here that the derivative uh, of our answer, uh, that's supposed to be minus one times. Well, actually minus one times, so we can write as negate. Um, so this is in turn, let's put this as a friend comment. This is equal to negate of, well, so f to the power of minus two. So f here is represented by fs. So we can write fs. Um, well, actually fs to the power of minus two. That's interesting. So let's, let's simplify that a bit. So f to the power of minus two, if we have, we know that r equals f to the power of minus one. I mean, r is defined to be recip f, which should be f to the power of minus one. So that means um, that f to the power of minus two is equal to r to the power of two. So this expression negate here, that's also the same as negate r, well, r squared or r times r times the derivative of f. Okay, so this should be, and I, I will just change the order slightly, so I say derivative of f first uh, times r times r. But it's, the multiplication is um, commutative and associative, so that should work. Okay, so what is the derivative of f? Well, that's fs prime. And then we should multiply it by r twice, and r extended by rs and rs. So this is basically what we would like to put in here. But notice that this multiplication here should be multiplication of these lists. So that's actually, I, I defined that by mal, I call that mal d. So it's actually twice mal d here. And this is also negate. So I, remember, I, I used the name mal d when I implemented the multiplication for the derivative series as lists because mal l was already taken for the implementation of multiplication for the for power series as coefficients. So I got negate l and mal d here. So let's see. I've tried to do this by sort of similarity with uh, algebraic equations. And now I've got a definition which actually recursively, well, it doesn't recursively call recip l. It calls instead multiplication and yeah, multiplication and negate. So let's see if we can try, try this on something. Um, let's do one plus x ds divided by one plus x ds. Actually, that would be a power series. So let's take ds five of this. Okay, so it's a power uh, or a derivative series where, which is a constant one actually. I mean, it's the, its value is one, and then all the derivatives are zero. It will actually, the way that it, it's implemented here, it become an infinite list of zeros. So it won't actually nicely end after one element, but it is it's still uh, equal to one. And the reason I'm not dividing xds by xds directly is because then we would get zero divided by zero, and uh, not a number coming out. 
So this is a little bit of a strange recursive definition, but I'm using the motivation step by step, knowing what these stand for. That result should be the function value, so one over f0, followed by the derivative. And the derivative in turn is minus the inner derivative times uh, 1 over f squared, which is actually the uh, reciprocal squared. Okay, um, and now we don't have much left. Uh, we, well, actually, we have three functions left, but they all have a very similar shape. So have we, if we've solved one of them, we've solved all of them. So let's start with the exponential function. So notice here that the exponential uh, exp ds here should be a sort of to the power of action on on already derivative series. So we have some function already internally. So the argument to exp that could be just x, in which case it's a just a two element list zero one, or it could be an, another exponential or whatever. So it could be an infinite list internal. But we don't have to care too much about what that list is. We just have to look at what differential equation this should satisfy. So it, it's a bit similar to what we did here. Um, so let's uh, try to define this one. So we have some kind of derivative series and we want to define it uh, using a differential equation. So the differential equation solutions we talked about last time, um, we know that x is equal to its own derivative. Um, and we can then use that to define x as the integral starting at x0 of x. So if we start, we define the function recursively like this, then we can define just a pure exponential function. So here, x ds ds is not the exponential function. So it's the sort of the exponential function composed with some other function, which we can call f or something like that. And that means that the derivative, oh, so this is also then the composition of those two, so with x of f of 0, and it should also here be, um, so remember, what, what really was written here was x prime. We should integrate the derivative. So if it's now x composed f prime, that's actually equal to x prime multiplied by f prime, the inner derivative. So this is an informal description of what should come here, because this is sort of on the semantic level, the function level, and I, I should do it uh, with this... Um, ds sequences. So it should, be, it should be the integ and integ for ds and I've defined that already in the previous uh, lecture. So that should take the starting value. So uh, let's call it, uh, well, e0. We can fill it in later in a where clause, uh, but yeah, let's, let's do it to avoid the complaints here, error to do. Okay, e0, and then it should have basically this expression. So what is this? So it's the derivative of x. Well, that's x itself. So in this case, it's actually the x ds of ds. So the, the thing we're defining here should appear recursively here. And then it should be multiplied with the inner derivative. And the inner derivative, that's the derivative, derivative of ds. So we have a function called der ds, which we can call on our ds here. Uh, let's see if this type checks. Oh, where equal? This, I was going to say e0 equal here. Okay, so then let's see, what is e0? So that's the, the starting point of the integration. So that should be the value of the function x composed f at zero. So x of f of zero. So we will define a little helper function here called val for the value, uh, which will take the ds series and extract the value, and then it will compute x of that value. So val is basically head. So val is almost equal to head. 
And the reason it's not head is because if the DS list is empty, it can't be head. So I think I already defined val DS, or at least gave it type signature for it somewhere. Oh, it's not called val DS, it's just called val, I think. Oh, too many evals. Okay, I didn't, so that's then just define it. So I need a val ds, which will take, it, it's a sort of trivial function to implement. So val ds takes a uh, derivative series of a and should return an a, and it should be almost head. And I want to return, if the, the list has at least one element, a0 followed by whatever, then I would return that a0. But if the list happens to be empty, I want to return 0. And this means I need to add the additive class constraint here. OK, val ds. Oh, sorry. So actually, what I wrote here is val l. Yeah, and that one I have already def defined. So <laughs> val dl ds here only needs to take a ds of ds and call val l on this inner list. So this is the definition of val l, but I apparently put it already in the helper functions in um, the psds other file. Okay, it should also uh, have a type. Let's see what happened here. Failed. Oops. No, no, it loaded. Okay, so let's see if we understand what's in here. So we integrate starting at, actually I can splice this one in, uh, starting at e to the power of whatever the function represented by ds has as, as the value at zero. And then starting from that, we integrate um, the function multiply by the inner derivative. And there ds is also, if you remember, a very simple function, that's tail. Okay, let's see now if, uh, if it actually does something reasonable. We have our test case. Uh, so we wanted to evaluate up here somewhere, exp negate, Yes, and we can take the test2 version of it. So this one, so x negate x times x, should it should be possible now if I got, first let's check if I got x ds, yes, I got x ds in, in place. So I should be able to apply now test2 to x ds. Now again, this will be an infinite list. So I should take ds, say five elements or 10 elements out of this. And now, we can see and try to compare and see if we agree with um, the Taylor series. So what we're getting here is that the, rivet, the value of the function at zero is one. Yes, that's one here. Uh, then the first derivative is zero, which is fine. And then it's the second derivative is minus two. So here is the coefficient is one, but the derivative the second derivative will be, you know, first x squared becomes 2x and that becomes constant 2. So that's correct. And then it says for the next term, it should be 14. So this one has the coefficient in the power series representation divided by 2. But then when we take the derivative four times, it will multiply it by 4, 3, 2, and 1. So multiply it by 24. And 24 over 2, that's 12. So that sun seems uh, reasonable. I mean, we can actually take even all the 10 terms here, but it's a little bit harder to compare if the 24 and the six and so on are correct. But if, if the first uh, five terms are right, I, I'm pretty confident that the rest are as well. So I realized that this is a very terse and perhaps strange exp expression, but it does implement uh, the exponential function um, of when composed with another function. So now given that one, I can easily do a very similar thing with sine and cosine. So let's see if we can copy the, the setup here. So given a derivative series, I should 
also integrate derivative series. Now it should start at the sign of the value of the inner series at zero. And it should not use, remember this, this is exp ds because exp prime is exp. This should be sort of sine prime. So sine prime is cosine ds and multiply with the inner derivative. The inner derivative is actually, in all of these cases, the same. So let's see. Well, actually, I can't test this one until I also implemented cosine, because you see sine ds is recursive, or mutually recursive, with cosine ds. So I will need to do something very similar here. I will need to integ the cosine. The starting point is the cosine of the value of the inner um, derivative series. And then let's see here, the derivative of cosine is minus sine ds. And then let's then so it lines up nicely. The inner derivative is going to be the same. Okay, now we have the chance to test if, um, if we get well, not test two, but if we want to compute the sine ds of x ds. Okay, so sine at zero is zero, derivative is cosine is one, second derivative is minus sine, which is zero, and then minus cosine, which is one, and then it repeats. So this is the, the four numbers, one, zero, one, zero, minus one, repeated uh, for him forever. And if we try cosine, it should be this series shifted one step. So now it starts at one instead of at zero. And we should actually, let's see what is called pit. Yes, we should be able to apply, take ds10 to pit, apply to dx ds. And yes, this sine squared plus cosine squared, uh, that expression represented as a derivative series has first the value at zero is one, and then all derivatives is zero. So it really is the constant one. Well, I mean, I guess from this test, we can't be sure. Maybe the 11th derivative is not zero, but it seems pretty likely that it will be an infinite list of zeros following that one. Okay, um, so to sum up, we have implemented now uh, also the transcendental instance so here we have, we had before already additive, well, basically we had a ring um, for ds a, and now we have also a field and transcendental. So we can, we can uh, translate all the constructors um, of the fun exp data type into an expression which will be possible to evaluate as a derivative sequence. And uh, just as a, as a check, we can also do this for polynomials. Yeah, and here you see there are actually small, small errors somewhere. This is in the 16th or 17th digit, 18th digit and so on. Uh, this this other one evaluated actually more nicely in this case. This probably because the arithmetics for the derivative series for for sine and cosine is very easy because it just is uh, ones and zeros that are multiplied and added. But while in the in the um, power series case, it will divide um, by uh, increasingly bigger numbers factorials, which means that after a while the, the rounding errors will accumulate and cause some problem. Okay, uh, that was all for this part. Let's continue later.